Maxine was beautiful, lovely, smart, fair, two-faced, a backstabber, a cheat, a liar, a whore, and a user. Whatever she wanted, she got immediately. She had an overwhelming, overbearing, and oversized ego, and was proud of it. One of her favorite victims to torture was a freshman called Agnes May Altman. It was considered normal behavior for juniors and seniors to torture the fresh meat, as they called them. Agnes was not the loveliest of lovelies, but her inner beauty held all the treasures a soul could ever want, and her virginal beauty emitted a soft presence about her. Maxine, despite her beauty, was jealous of that because it was considered laughable, even to the popular folk, to call Maxine a virgin, considering her reputation with cheating with her best friend's boyfriends. If it weren't for Maxine, she would be treated humanely, but since Maxine was so popular, Agnes would never be free from her severe acts of verbal sadism. Poor Agnes was walking down the hallway one day, when Maxine pulled out a strand of hair out of her scalp. Agnes cried in pain, and when the hall monitor asked what had happened, Agnes never revealed what Maxine had done to her. As a new school year rolls into place, Agnes is now a sophomore, and Maxine a senior. But that doesn't stop Maxine from torturing Agnes. Agnes had changed physically over the summer. She was now 16, and had a curvier body, fuller cheeks, and had long dull hair shined with radiance. Without meaning to, her beauty was beginning to surpass Maxine. Since this was Maxine's last year in high school, she wasn't going to have any of that. She was going to run for prom queen this year, and wasn't going to be sullied by a mere sophomore. So, later that day, she waited in the hall where Agnes usually passed to go to her next class. As soon as Agnes turns into the hallway, Maxine sets her foot out and trips Agnes. She falls and her face hits the floor. Agnes screamed in pain, and Maxine laughed in return. She wanted to ruin Agnes and had succeeded. But Agnes wasn't thinking of that. But anger towards Maxine burned in her eyes. Agnes was such a sight. Maxine shrinks back with fear at the way Agnes stares at her. You'll get yours, Maxine Evans. You will get yours. May the heavens and the deep abysmal pits of hell be the witness of that today. I hope everyone will see the ugliness and wickedness of what you truly are inside. You may hide it behind that pretty face of yours, but it won't last forever. Curse you, Maxine. I hope your undeserved beauty withers and dies so that the rotting carcass that you really are will be exposed to all to see. With that, Agnes turned on her heel and walked into the ladies' room. Maxine shrugs and smiles at what she did to Agnes. Freak, Maxine whispers to herself. Later that night, while she's asleep, a tiny spider crawls up the apple of her cheek and sits there. It stays there for many hours until Maxine brushes it off in her sleep. The next morning in the mirror, she sees a little red pimple on her cheek. She's outraged and puts a little astringent on it so that it wouldn't spread. Her day at school was fine. But when she got home, the little red spot had darkened to a deep blood red. Later that night, she washed her face twice and put more astringent on it, and then went to bed. The next morning, she awoke to find that the spot was getting bigger. This time, her friends had really noticed, and this concerned Maxine. Agnes, on the other hand, was lucky. All she had was a bruised nose and a split lip, but people were beginning to talk to her. Maxine was beginning to wonder. Later that night, she went to her mother and asked if it would have been wise to pop the pimple to get it over with, but her mother advised against it saying that it was too risky and that popping a pimple could cause bruising of the skin and scarring. So to bed she went. As time went on, Agnes had healed and her beauty was restored. All of Maxine's friends began to talk to her, but despite it all, Maxine was still herself. She still never tried to impress anybody and her pimple was now the size of a thumb imprint. No one would talk to Maxine because of it and also because they feared that it could blow at any moment. Maxine was miserable, and was now suspicious of Agnes. Through it all, Maxine never changed, 
and continued to call Agnes names whenever she saw her in the hallway. But Agnes acted as if she didn't hear or see her. Maxine felt as if she were a has-been. She couldn't cope with that and began to lose her patience. She runs to the girl's bathroom and screams at the mirrors when she sees the oversized zit on her face. What did I do to deserve this? I did nothing! Nothing, nothing! Maxine screamed so loud that the pimple burst. At first she was relieved, but then she noticed the little creatures crawling out of the pus in her skin. They were tiny baby spiders, thousands of them crawling all over her face. She batted some away from her face and a group of girls walked in on her. They saw her face and screamed, then ran out of the bathroom. Just then, she sees two feet in the bathroom stall. Agnes makes her way out of the stall and sees Maxine's face. There's no sign of fear etched anywhere on her face. I told you it was going to get yours, Maxine. I just never thought it'd be that bad. Agnes smiles and says, Oh, and before I forget, that's just the first batch of them. <laughs>